So welcome everybody to the update on Occupton. I'm Don LeBeau. I'm a program officer here with Occupton. I am um, responsible for a lot of the services and programming development, um, along with my other program officer, Justine Kugel. Um, and today's webinar is just going to be everything that we do here at Occupton, and then some updates on some programming things that we have happening, as well as going over our market study. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar with Occupton and are new to our group, uh, we are a Native Community Development Financial Institution. And we are located on the Cheyenne River Lakota Nation in Eagle Butte, South Dakota. And we serve folks in the native agriculture industry um, nationwide. So we do financing in native agriculture. Okay. Our mission is to transform native agriculture and food economies by delivering creative capital, leading paradigm changes, and enhancing producer prosperity across Indian country. Akiptan is the Lakota word for working together in a cooperative effort, and this is reflective of our lending philosophy. Uh, while CDFIs are like banks in the sense that we provide loans, you cannot deposit money. Um, we are different than banks because we provide a lot of technical assistance with our loans, and these technical assistance comes in the form of business and goal planning, succession planning, financial literacy training, and any other type of support that our clients need. So while there are laws that we do have to follow, we're unregulated and this is what allows us to be flexible and innovative with our products. Okay, since our inception in 2019, we have reached 28 tribal nations. We have committed loan capital in the amount of 2.2 million and we have dispersed 334 loans. So a bit about our products and services. We offer a variety of loan products and services and they are all designed to increase the agriculture economy in Indian country. Our financial and technical assistance products and services are always evolving so that we can meet the needs of our producers. We'll go over each of these here in the next few slides. Um, we have a youth loan, a general loan, an operating loan and line of credit, a land mortgage and down payment assistance loan. Uh, we do business and goal planning, succession planning, marketing assistance, financial literacy training, and a plethora of other services as well. Um, as for eligibility, uh, producers must be involved in the native agriculture field. So this is anything on the food chain from initial production to retail. Um, activities include, but are not limited to farming, ranching, fishing, timber, retail, and et cetera. And because of our bylaws and policies, we have to be using our funds to support production in agriculture in some form. Um, and this does not include rodeo or agritourism. Agritourism, I can't talk today. Um, so it's okay to come with come with an idea, and we will help you to get to a final business plan. All right. So a little bit about our youth loan. So we firmly believe in. My slides are jumping ahead of me. Okay, so a little bit about our youth loan. We believe that investing in youth is a step in food security and food sovereignty. So we make sure that we have um, this loan to support future generations. So we have a youth loan for ages 10 to 12 for up to $5,000, ages 13 to 15 years old for up to $7,500, ages 16 to 18 for up to $10,000. And this works well with 4-H show animals. It can be used for any type of native ag business and it can be paired with an FSA loan. And this follows our um, payment model of up to 12 years of repayment. This loan is paired with our youth financial literacy training. Uh, we are getting ready to um, release a youth focused workbook this year. 
Okay. Then we have our general loan. This loan was created to fill gaps that producers might have in their operation. Um, the eligibility around this includes 18 years and older clients, up to 12 years of repayment. Um, the limit is up to 250,000 for this. And it can be used for equipment, infrastructure, value added operations, transportation, livestock, or refinancing any current debt. So the general loan is also paired with technical assistance to help ensure that our producers are experience, experiencing success. Uh, we currently have a rancher specific financial literacy workbook, um, and we are currently working on an entity focused workbook as well so that producers have a step-by-step -step guide to um, walk through their operations. So that's our general loan. We also have our operating and line of credit loan. So we realize that many producers have short-term needs and we are happy to fill that gap as well. We can pair an operating line with our general loan for full circle servicing. For this one, you simply need to be 18 years and older. We have the up to 12 months of repayment. And this one goes up to $250,000 as well. And just like with our other product, this one is also paired with technical assistance so that our producers are set up for success. Okay. This is our land mortgage and down payment assistance. So land is a complicated issue in Indian country and Occupton is ready to help solve the access to land issues, whether that is around trust land or fee land. Um, the eligibility on this one is 18 years and older, up to 30 years of repayment, um, up to $250,000. And this can be used for consolidating interest, purchasing a piece of land to operate on, or purchasing land um, and a building combination for operating needs. So Occupant is familiar with working in Indian country, and we know the importance of land access and ownership. Um, we also understand the highly fractionated issues that plague Indian country, and we're eager to help consolidate those interests with this product. Okay, so we have two different repayment styles here at Occupton, and these go hand in hand with our patient capital lend lending philosophy. We've named them our traditional repayment option and our interest only option. And I'll go ahead and go through those here. Okay, this is our traditional repayment option. So these are blended repayments from the start. This one has longer terms than what you would see at a typical lending institution. And this one is great for equipment, infrastructure, and for those who are already at their maximum capacity. Um, one question we get when we go over these is what is our interest rate? Well, that varies quarterly. And currently we're at a 1.5% for youth loans, 3.0% for blended payments, and 5.5% for our interest only payments. And I'll go over our interest only repayment option here on the next slide. Okay, so this one is our most unique. Um, this is our five year interest only payments and then it switches to principal. Um, it allows for the producer to reinvest their profits back into themselves and it's designed to help the producer grow their balance sheet. This one is great for livestock and people who want to have large upfront capacity growth. And we'll go ahead and look at the examples here on the next slide. Okay, so this is just a spreadsheet of what our traditional repayment option looks like. You see it goes up to seven years and you can see um, the breakdowns of the annual loan payment and how the principal and the interest is broken down. The interest right here will fluctuate. Like I said, that um, changes quarterly here at Occupton. And let's take a look at our interest only repayment option here. Okay, so this one, you can see the interest only period right here, your annual payment is listed in this column. Sorry, I jumped ahead, go back here, there we go. Okay, and then, 
after this five years, it is then a blended payment and you can see your annual payments here as well as your principal paid. Okay, if there's any questions, y'all are welcome to put them in the chat. This is usually where we get the questions when we're presenting in person. Um, also happy to follow up with you uh, via email. Okay, so those are our two different styles of repayment options. I wanna talk about our loan process here. Um, so it begins with discovery and intake, and this is where our loan officers get to know the client and your operation. You would start by completing an intake form, going through eligibility, and then they have a checklist that you would go through as well. Um, from there, you would follow up with any technical assistance and application completion details that you would need. So you would complete all the forms and submit any required materials. You would complete your financial projections. You would complete business and goal planning with your loan officer, um, complete any financial literacy work if necessary. And then you would look at those two different repayment options that we just went over. Um, from there, um, if you have everything in, um, your loan officer then goes to review and closing. Then the loan officer creates a loan narrative. It's reviewed by our executive director and then it's sent to loan committee. Um, the loan committee reviews it. They may or may not ask any clarifying questions. They do have questions. It goes back to the loan officer and they get with you and you go over the different pieces. Um, and if it's approved, then from there, the loan closing documents are then drawn up and then signed. Um, if denied, we'll always give a reason why, and you will be given the opportunity to fix your application. Um, we're here to support you and help you um, in any way possible. And so we never just give the application back with no reasoning. We always try to help and give um, different ways that you can fix it. So once you've been approved, um, there is something called aftercare. Um, this is where you would submit any invoices or quotes for disbursement. Our loan officers would do a site visit if available. Um, and then we have our informal quarterly check-ins. This is where our loan officer visits with um, our clients once every quarter. Um, and just to see how you're doing, see if you need any support um, and offer that partnership style of lending, a patient capital lending. Um, and then we do an annual financial review and offer any further technical assistance that is needed. Okay, that's the loan process, everybody. Um, I wanna go ahead and talk about our um, 2002 market study findings. So in 2020, 22, we conducted a market study and um, through various data collection tools, we worked with uh, Sweetgrass Consulting. Um, and this market study, it came, we came out with 31 recommendations from this market study. So the first one, um, we, we decided just to focus on a few of them and do like a summary of things here. Um, the first one um, that we li have listed here is that we have an unmet need of 43 billion. So we had, I think it was 276 um, people who participated in the market study. So 43 billion in unmet need for Native American producers. We know that it's much larger than this, right? Because this one focused mostly on ranchers and gar and farmers. Um, so some of our solutions or some of the points off of this 43 billion of unmet need for Native producers shows that there's an average need of 540K per operator. Um, some of our solutions to that are that we currently offer our loan of up to 250,000, but we're looking at ways to increase this so we can offer more. Um, interest rates were also at like 38% to 7% 7 
of higher interest than others. Um, our solution to that is our lower interest rate, which I mentioned earlier, which is 3.0 to 5.5%. Um, so we are trying to offer lower interest rates and we offer our investment or interest only lending model to support operations. Um, so we know that that's the unmet need for this market study. Um, what we also learned in this market study um, is that most producers want to grow their operation in either volume or diversification. So ways that we are continuing to support this is by offering products that offer diversification through Occupton. Um, we also have different programming that we're trying to offer to meet some support to this um, unmet need. We have what we call our Awoju program, and I'll go through that a little bit further in the slides. Um, and this is a program for value added um, producers who want to diversify what they're doing. Um, the other finding is that 43% of producers are wanting more knowledge on land issues. So ways that we are trying to help with this is we've partnered with the Indian Land Tenure Foundation by offering webinars so that clients are informed on land issues. You can also go to their website and check out all of the information that they offer. Um, we cover land issue information in our curriculum. So not only do we have the rancher guide, but we have the entity one coming out and then we have a youth one. So we cover some of the land issues in those curriculums. Um, the other thing that we learned in this is that 50% of producers are in need of financing for land. And so we have our land um, mortgage product as well for that. And the other thing in our findings is that 75% of participants have off-farm income. So what we believe here at Occupton is that we should be able to get our operations into a healthy cash flow so that operators aren't needing to hold full-time off-farm jobs. Um, and this is where a lot of our technical assistance comes in to build out those healthy cash flows and get them to that point, hopefully. Okay, we have a couple more here on the next slide. So the other one is that 51% of native producers expressed a need for additional training and technical assistance related to sustainability, climate change, and conservation planning. So we have a lot of cool things coming up for that, but we do offer one-on-one -on -one financial work with our clients to help build their financial knowledge around business planning. Um, and half of our portfolio who wants to do better in their, half of our portfolio, portfolio, I cannot talk today. The bad day to not be able to talk when you're doing a presentation. Um, but half of our portfolio wants to do better in their practices, um, which speaks to the standards that we have in Indian country, right? Um, we're stewards of the land. And so we want to build on that knowledge and we want to offer those things. And we have some great programming coming up here in the next year to help support that need. Um, another important thing Thing that was in the market study was they a lot of those that participated wanted to see advocacy on the hill and so we're able to help amplify our producers voices by visiting and partnering with those that are working to um, increase access to capital so that we can serve them better um, the other is that 48% of participants felt like the overall loan application process across the board, so banks, FSA, CDFIs, et cetera, could be improved. So in response to that, Occupton's loan officers offer the one-on-one -on -one opportunity with applicants to better serve them and help them and walk them through the application process to make sure that their needs are met and make sure that they're not overwhelmed with the process. Um, and the other one is that only 27% of participants have a succession plan. So we received funding to support succession planning with producers and we're creating tools right now so that they can help to better 
process through that and set up their operations for success and for the next generation and their family or community. Um, we have hosted a couple different succession planning webinars so that they know um, what to plan for. We also have a booklet coming out that we're working on. So they have a step-by-step -step guide um, of how to get there and make sure that the operation is cared for um, in the case of succession. So we're creating resources and we're really excited about them. Um, but these are not all of the findings. Um, like I said before, there was 31 recommendations. These are the ones that we pulled out to go over. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the chat the link to the market study. It's on our website and it's also available here. And if you wanted a copy, we could mail out a copy. Let me go ahead and find it here. Okay, there it is in the chat. Um, like I said, uh, Sweetgrass Consulting is the one that did the diligent work on this project with us. But we would also like to thank the Intertribal Agriculture Council, um, Indigenous Food and Agri the Indigenous Food and Agriculture Initiative, um, the Indian Land Tenure Foundation, and the Native American Agriculture Fund for being on our advisory committee for this. Um, all of these partners um, help share in our commitment to Native agriculture, and it's what drives our work. And we know that this work is best done together. So we're really thankful for being able to do this market study, and we hope to continue this work. And these are the types of things that help build out our programming and our lending models so that we can better serve um, Natives in agriculture um, a little bit better every year, right? Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about our partnerships coming up. So we have um, two different food business centers that we have partnered with. The first one is our North Central USDA Regional Food Business Center. So this one um, is for three states. The North Central USDA Regional Food Business Center is what they named it. Focuses on expanding small and mid sized agriculture value chains in the three states of Minnesota, North Dakota, and South Dakota. So activities for this includes technical assistance to create new value chain connections, expand supply and demand to and from new and existing markets, um, improve viability and increasing market value of products, and also boosting the upper Midwest regional food systems in response to supply chain weaknesses and small business challenges. So um, this one is the North Central USD Regional Food and Business Center. There'll be more information coming out um, for this in the next couple of weeks here. But we also have our partnership with the Intertribal Agriculture Council for the National Intertribal Food Business Center as well. So this one partners with IAC, the Indian Land Tenure Foundation and the Indigenous Food and Agriculture Initiative. And it's developed to um, coordinate national food system development plans that support the growth and expansion of American Indian and Alaska Native food businesses. So the focus will be on small and mid-sized food and farm businesses with 68% of the total funding being allocated for capacity growth building awards. Um, this was announced at the um, IAC annual conference in December and there will be more information coming on this as well. We just wanted folks to be aware that we are partnering with these two different food business centers. Um, and you can reach out to us with any questions on this, but there will be more information coming out. So I hope everybody signed up for our newsletters um, so you can be one of the first to know and how our partnerships are going on these two different um, projects. Okay, we have a, a lot of different programming that we also do here at Occupton. Um, so besides our lending products, um, we have 
our technical assistance, and we dealt, developed different youth programming components. And one of them is our Okichaye scholarship. So we're committed to supporting the next generation of Native agriculture stewards. This scholarship is for Native American high school seniors who are pursuing a degree that will help support the Native agriculture industry. Um, this year, because we are in our third year, um, we are awarding an amount of $2,000. We will be awarding 15 scholarship. Um, the scholarship has already opened on January 3rd. The application process closes on April 3rd at 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Um, eligibility for students simply states that students must be a Native American high school senior graduating in the spring of 2024 and attending college in the fall of 2024. Um, there is an essay component to this scholarship. Um, and in that essay, um, they must um, explain how their degree will be used within the ag agriculture industry. So this can include, but it's not limited to degrees such as animal science, agriculture business, agriculture economics, horticulture. Um, they could be going after a business degree and then working at a native CDFI for ag lending or a native nonprofit for ag lending. Um, I see a question in the chat for the youth scholarship. Can students who are in natural resources also apply? Um, yes, as long as they can explain in their essay how they will be utilizing that degree um, for native agriculture use um, in their essay, then they can. And they're definitely welcome to follow up with me um, via email or a phone call to ask any questions as well. Um, the other eligibility components is that they must be a tribal citizen, so they must submit any type of tribal citizen documents so, or proof of descendancy of a federally or state recognized American Indian tribe, Alaska Native village, or Native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander, or descendant of Pacific Islander within the United States. And in the essay also demonstrate a commitment to the Native agriculture community. Um, let me make sure I'm not missing any key components on this. Um, so they, those who would like to apply can go to our website and download the application and fill it out and mail it into us. Um, or they can fill out the PDF online and email it to me. Or we have an online application that they can fill out as well and upload all of the documents that they need. Um, and we also will be having a webinar on this. Um, I'll talk about that more at the end of the um, presentation here, but this is our Okichaye scholarship. So um, Okichaye is the Lakota word for cultivation and that is what we've named it. So folks can reach out to me if they have any questions um, about the scholarship. Okay, we also have our Native Youth Business Plan Competition. We've named this the Native Youth Makichanyapi Business Plan Competition. Um, Makichanyapi is the Lakota word for agriculture. So this um, business plan contest aims to help students who are interested in the Native agriculture industry um, to help develop or build on their ag business plan. We're also providing technical assistance to help students build their business plan. Um, there will be three winners selected for this um, contest. First place is winning $1,500. Second place is winning $1,000. Third place, uh, $500. So this contest is ideal for those who have a passion for the native agriculture food industry, have a idea for a native agriculture business in their community, or have a current business plan they're already um, building on or those that are eager to learn more about refining and building on that business plan. So um, the eligibility guidelines are that they must be a Native American citizen in the US, must be in the age range of 16 to 18 years old, 
Um, the business plan must be uplifting the native agriculture industry. So it can be anything in the native ag industry. Um, for example, cattle ranches, buffalo ranches, fisheries, anything value added, gardening, um, meat processing centers, beekeeping, or any agriculture business in the industry. Um, so they have to submit a written agriculture business plan and also submit a one to five minute verbal business plan pitch, um, video recording, all of these um, uploading template, or we have a template too for the business plan and that is available on our website. This one is similar to the scholarship where as it closes um, April 30th um, at 4 p.m. as well. And that information is also on our website. Um, the way they submit is just simply uploading that written business plan and the video on our website. Okay, if there's no questions, that is our business plan contest coming up. Okay. Um, previously, when I was talking about the market study, I talked about programs that we developed. Um, last year, we debuted our Awoju program. Awoju is the Lakota word for garden. Um, so we developed this program to assist Native American gardeners across the U.S. in building their knowledge to grow a successful gardening business and to create value-added products. So we have four different online workshops for all level of gardeners who are interested in building their knowledge of creating garden, gardening businesses um, with the goal of offering those value added products for sale. Um, so in this class, and this can, this can change, we can structure it a little differently, but last year we had business plan development, and then we had a couple of presenters come in and talk about planting a successful garden. They talked about gardening management and produce harvesting. Um, within all of those modules, they also talked about the importance of soil health, and then um, we also had a presenter talking about understanding value added agriculture and they talked about their farmer's market that they have um, going on and how to do value added products as well. Um, so we have limited seats in these classes, um, but we offer them to those that are uplifting the native ag industry in the US, those that are um, available to be present at all of the four workshops and do the um, homework that goes along with it outside of class. And those with an intention of starting a gardening business in their communities and taking it to the next level. Um, we also um, offer a little stipend with this one as well. It fluctuates, but participants are also required to complete a small grant agreement with us. Um, Usually we have about 10 seats available um, and a lot of the folks that get that small stipend, they utilize that uh, grant to purchase supplies for their garden, pay a water bill or purchase anything for their startup for the value added item. So we have some eligibilities around this and we will be um, debuting this soon. Um, and that's our Awoju program. We're really excited about this year to see what that turns out to be like. Okay, so those are three of our different programming that we have, but we also have a rancher cohort that um, our other program officer, Justine, is hosting right now. She just filled the class. Um, and we um, will talk about that more after we see how uh, this first cohort goes, but just be aware that that is something that is offered to our clients as well. Okay, so um, webinars. We have a lot of webinars coming up here. Um, we. Like I said before, we provide more than just loans and direct technical support to our clients and borrowers. We're always expanding our programming and here are a list of our webinars that we have coming up. Um, today we have our Occupaton update. Next month we're gonna have two separate ones. Our first one is gonna be on February 6th at 4 p.m. for our Okichani scholarship. If you have any students, 
teachers, community members that need funding for college, um, scan this code here and have them register or register yourself um, for that. Um, $2,000 for a scholarship is quite um, beneficial, right? I have a student in college right now, and if he was going into agriculture, I would encourage him to apply for that one. Um, but that's the one we have coming up um, beginning of February. And then at the end of February, we will be hosting um, part one of our cattle markets webinar. Um, we have a Mr. Daryl Hill from the University of Oklahoma, who will be presenting an overview of cattle markets on February 27th at 12 p.m. That's a one hour webinar. Um, and then in the same month, we'll be talking about the Youth Business Plan Contest. So if you know any youth that would be interested in participating on that, I will be going over the business plan template and all of the eligibility pieces. And students can also set up time with me to do some one-on-one -on -one technical assistance at that webinar. Um, so that one is on February 28th at 4 p.m. And then in March, we will be doing part two of the cattle markets. Um, and this will be more of an educational, in-depth look at what all of that data means. And that is happening on March 26th at 12 p.m. So you can go ahead and scan this code or go to our website and um, sign up. And I'll put the link to sign up in the chat so you can do that as well. Okay, this is just the first um, quarter of our webinars. We have a lot more coming up and this is the page, um, akitan.org slash backslash events, where you can see all of our upcoming webinars. Okay, so that takes us through March for webinars, but we also have on our website webinar recordings, like I mentioned before, um, we have succession um, planning webinar recordings, some from the Indian Land Tenure Foundation talking about land access and land information, um, balance sheet, cash flow sheets. And there's all kinds of webinar recordings on there for um, your information. Okay, last but not least, we have some career opportunities here at Occupatan. We're currently um, hiring for a program officer that will be um, focused on regenerative ag and climate smart practices, a loan administrator, and we will be getting ready to um, hire for a summer youth intern as well. That one starts in May, but you can scan this code or go to our website and check out all of the job descriptions for these three. Um, and the last thing that we have on our website is a lot of financial literacy re resources. Um, and they're all free financial planning information tools. Um, you're welcome to scan that code and go check those out as well. Um, and if you haven't already, um, you're welcome to sign up for our newsletter so you can keep in contact with us. Um, our information is here. You can follow us on all of our social media channels. Um, but I want to go ahead and check the chat for any questions that I might have missed. Let's see here. Will you be sending out a recording of this webinar? Yes, we will send that out. It'll also be on our website within um, the next week and a half so that you can go over anything that you may have missed or want more information at. And I'll put my email in the chat. If you have any follow-up questions, you're welcome to reach out to me. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining our webinar today. If there are any follow-up questions, all of our loan officers' emails are on our website, um, as well as the programming and our executive director, director. We're more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, and we would also like to share out all of our programming with any youth in your community that are interested in scholarship, lending products, um, or our youth business competition. Mm -hmm.